Hello everyone. Welcome back to our discussion on sex-linked inheritance. So in the previous session, we discussed about uh, the uh, what are sex-linked inheritances, what are y-linked inheritances, uh, the characteristic features of uh, the uh, sex-linked inheritances or sex-linked genes, which is how they are inherited, which is uh, how x-linked genes are inherited, how y-linked genes are inherited, and also we discussed about the particular pattern of inheritance of x-linked genes or sex-linked genes that at this particular pattern, which is called as uh, the crisscross inheritance. Now we are going to discuss about uh, the example uh, coming under uh, sex-linked inheritance or X-linked inheritance, which is uh, hemophilia. So hemophilia is a condition where, or it is a genetic disorder which is inherited through the X chromosome, and this is a clotting disorder where the blood does not clot. It is a clotting disorder, so it is a rare condition in which the blood does not clot, and normally it is because of the lack of sufficient clotting factors. So it is uh, some uh, either one clotting factors or uh, or two clotting factors or anything can be that the uh, defect in the particular clotting factors uh, clotting factor uh, uh, the production of the clotting factor uh, causes this particular condition called as hemophilia. So what what uh, result is uh, hemophilia individuals they bleed uh, a longer time uh, in a very small injury. Small cut usually aren't much problem if they are severe. Uh, if there is a severe defi deficiency of the clotting protein, the greater is the concern with the internal wounds, uh, which can damage the internal organs, uh, the tissues, and it can be fatal or life threatening. So it is caused by defect in one of the genes that determine the protection of blood clotting factors and they reside in the X chromosome. That is either it can be uh, the factor 8 which is if uh, uh, the condition is due to the, uh, the deficiency of factor 8 that is called as hemophilia A and the second one is the deficiency with the, uh, the factor which is 9 and if it is uh, with the 9 that is called as hemophilia B and both are located in the X chromosome. So they are clinically most identical and associated with spontaneous bleeding. You cannot identify uh, with uh, bleeding or you cannot identify uh, uh, by visually observing the bleeding whether it is uh, of uh, factor 8 or factor 9. Both uh, 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 are having similar uh, phenotypic expression that is they bleed continuously in uh, when they are having wounds. So this also shows uh, what is called as a crisscross inheritance we can see here. So, uh, the males are affected because it is a hemizygous condition. So, a red X shows an affected or a, uh, the, the defective allele is shown as a red X. The normal X is shown as uh, purple as well as in blue and Y as normal. So, here you can see that affected male uh, marries a normal woman and you can see that uh, this red is passed to a daughter. The daughter is a carrier here. So here also the daughter is a carrier here and here because the uh, woman or the male or the female is normal you can see that uh, the males in this case they are normal because they inherit the inherit only Y chromosome from their uh, father. The X chromosome, the affected X chromosome resides in the uh, father. As a result, the, the uh, in this case all the uh, daughters in this particular generation will be carriers. But not only in the generation, all the uh, daughters which is, uh, which is uh, from this particular parents, they will be carriers and sons will be normal. No affected individuals will be generated from this particular case. Okay? Uh, and uh, when a carrier female like this from this particular generation, so if this carrier female is marrying a normal man, what happens is a carrier female is marrying this carrier female she is marrying a normal man. You can see that the affected the red X chromosome is passing to the affected or uh, will be passed down to the sons. So here you can see two types of uh, uh, sons, uh, genotypic sons are produced. Uh, one is a normal son which carries one of the normal X chromosome from the mother and the other one she can uh, donate either of the X chromosomes. So if uh, the sons get this particular X chromosome they will be affected and here also the females will be normal. So in if this is the particular case as we said earlier uh, with an affected father and a normal mother a normal father and an affected mother in all these cases you can see that the females are not affected females are carriers or normal. 
they are either carriers or they will be normal in uh, these cases the uh, the hemizygous males are usually affected so here you can see from father to daughter and that is expressed in the next generation in the grandson so this is what is called as a cross cross inheritance pattern that is being expressed so here also you can see two different types of uh, uh, inheritances so father without hemophilia and the mother is a carrier okay so both will be phenotypically same they do not they will not show this hemophilia as a result you can see uh, that uh, this particular there is a chance that half of a son will be half of her sons will be affected and half of her daughter will be carriers and half will be normal so this is the case so here you have an affected male and an uh, normal uh, female because the female is normal all the sons will be normal and all the uh, daughters will be carriers because uh, 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 the x chromosome from the father is a recessive or the uh, carrying that particular defective gene as a result all the daughters in this particular case you can see that all the daughters are carriers here and all the sons are normal so this is the pattern of inheritance with regard to x chromosomes or x linked genes or sex linked genes so uh, virtually all sufferers of hemophilia are usually males females are generally uh, they are carriers so one third of the hemophiliacs have no record of their family history so uh, if you uh, try to trace their family history uh, the people are uh, when uh, you you, uh, you should do a genetic counseling they say that they do not have a family history of this particular hemophilia and that might be because of three reasons one is this might be a new genetic mutation that is uh, that particular individual who is having hemophilia might have had that particular gene which is a mutant one a mutant gene might have been introduced with that particular person the other two chances are normally seen this is a rare condition that means a mutant mutation being invested into a new individual is very rare condition it can happen but it is very rare the other two conditions are the ones which is prevalent that is the previously affected individuals in the family were carrier females so they didn't show that particular female phenotype so that uh, you say that there is no affected uh, uh, affected uh, individuals in the pedigree so uh, they might be carriers the second is the sons who have died early in childhood and that uh, he uh, he might have suffered from hemophilia so childhood that might be due to hemophilia and that might have gone undetected because if it is an uh, uh, one or two generations before uh, such uh, uh, type of uh, child uh, when there is uh, uh, the death in the childhood it goes undetected but if it is in the present day uh, usually that can be uh, that it will be defected in an early stage but uh, previous in previous generation we cannot say that uh, because uh, uh, where childhood uh, Uh, deaths were uh, common and that might be due to different reasons in such cases uh, th uh, this particular condition might be missed from the pedigree uh, because of the lack of uh, uh, determination of that particular gene or lack of uh, 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 knowledge of that particular trait so hemophilia uh, symptoms vary depending on the degree of clotting factor deficiency and the nature of injury and treatment includes regular deep replacement of the specific clotting factor uh, that is reduced so uh, uh, first is i to identify which clotting factor is deficient and replacement or uh, the addition uh, of that particular thing with injections only can uh, uh, help their uh, the survival of uh, hemophilia individuals so as we said uh, hemophilia uh, hemophilia is usually uh, seen more in males than in females the reason is because uh, uh, as i said because uh, two hemophilia individuals usually they do not marry because if they marry all their individuals or the, all their sons and daughters will be affected and if uh, one is affected and the other one is not affected if male is affected and female is uh, uh, normal you can hope that all the females are carriers and males have if only uh, a, uh, males do not inheritance that particular inherit that particular disease females will be 
uh, will be carriers only. So uh, that is uh, one of the reason uh, in this particular case. And if females uh, are getting this particular hemophilia, uh, this uh, replacement is a very must uh, for females with hemophilia. Uh, the condition is worse in females with hemophilia than in males. So in males, uh, the condition of hemophilia uh, uh, or will cause a problem if they are having an injury, an external injury because of some accidents or wounds, etc. And as we said, if they are having internal wounds, that becomes fatal if it is if it goes undetected. Uh, but when you come to uh, females, uh, that will be a, uh, or uh, that will cause more problems compared to males, and that is because in females. Uh, after uh, the, uh, uh, the menstrual cycle begins or af after ovulation is being uh, or after the menstrual cycle uh, has been initiated in a female at puberty, uh, uh, what happens is that every month uh, there is a bleeding cycle where uh, the endometrium uh, from the uterus lining, it's, it's cleaved off and the bleeding is initiated. And if clotting does not occur, Hemophilia means clotting does not occur and that will end up in fatality for a female if it is undetected or if it is not treated. If clotting factors are given externally, uh, the, it might not be a problem. But if, if it is uh, not so, it is fatal with regard, without any uh, accidental wound in uh, case of females after puberty. These wounds which are being uh, produced every month becomes fatal. So that's why I said, uh, hemophilia, if it is not being treated, uh, it becomes more fatal uh, to males than in females. So, uh, this hemophilia is also called as a royal disease. Uh, and the reason is because the hemophilia was prominent in the uh, European royalty in the uh, 19th uh, and 20th centuries. So, uh, the Britain's uh, Queen Victoria. Uh, through five, uh, through two of her five daughters, so only the affected daughters are shown here. Uh, she had, I think, eight, uh, um, eight uh, sons and daughters. Uh, so of this, three were affected. Two daughters and one, uh, one son was affected. Uh, she was a, uh, she was not hemophiliac. Actually, she was a carrier. Uh, she was a carrier, and uh, you can see that. Uh, Britain's Queen Victoria, through two of her uh, five daughters, Prince Alice, uh, Princess Alice, and Princess uh, Beatrice, passed the mutation to various royal houses across the continent, including uh, the royal families of Spain, Germany, and Russia. So they were carriers of this. They didn't know they had hemophilia. Uh, she was a carrier, uh, and because she was a carrier, and uh, she had normal sons, so this was the son who had a chance to get the carrier. Uh, that particular uh, recessive X chromosome from her and she was affected with that hemophilia and these two were uh, carriers for that particular uh, genes. The other daughters were normal without that particular carrier gene and uh, and because they were married to different royal uh, uh, royal houses in, uh, in different continents, uh, this spread to Spain, Germany and Russia. Victoria's son, uh, Prince uh, Leopold, Duke of Albany, also suffered from the disease. So, he showed this particular trait, hemophilia. Uh, these two daughters were carriers. And for this reason, hemophilia was popularly called as a royal disease. Hemophilia passed down uh, by Queen Victoria was probably the relatively rare type of hemophilia, which is called as hemophilia B, which is due to uh, the uh, lack of factor 9. Factor 8 is hemophilia A. So this is with this particular example hemophilia. So we'll also discuss the second example of uh, sex-linked inheritance uh, of uh, color blindness. So color blindness is the inability to distinguish red and green color, and that is a common form of color blindness, and this is called as partial color blindness. So there is also a rare form which is called as total color blindness, where individuals cannot recognize any color. So this is a sex-linked recessive trait. Uh, the other one, hemophilia, is also a recessive uh, allele. So this is also a recessive trait caused by a recessive allele XC. So here females are affected only in the homozygous condition. 
heterozygous females are carriers males are always affected if they get the recessive allele so in this condition there is two conditions partial as well as total uh, the rare condition is total there is no color perception so the normal one or the, the common one is partial color blindness and that shows a crisscross pattern as you see here affected male and uh, the normal one so uh, this uh, allele is passed from father to grandson so this is a grandson and that is through this daughter so father daughter and grandson so this particular pattern will be showed for every sex linked genes or x linked genes and uh, this is what is called as a crisscross pattern that is being shown so we discussed about two examples one is color blindness and the other one is hemophilia both were X-linked recessive traits that means the conditions of color blindness and hemophilia is expressed in a recessive homozygous recessive condition in females and uh, if uh, a male receives uh, a X-linked recessive uh, uh, gene whether uh, in uh, the uh, heterozygous condition itself or he receives only one X chromosome and if he uh, has a chance to receive the defective gene uh, he will be affected. So this is with uh, the examples of uh, sex-linked inheritances. Uh, so with this, we'll uh, we'll uh, stop the discussion of this particular uh, examples. The next is wilding gene. So we'll discuss this in the next session. Thanks for hearing.